If you're just here for the Sugar Ray talk, hit the timestamp in the pinned comment. <clears throat> Fast forward through these couple of minutes. But I figured since this wasn't worthy of a video unto itself, and since I am talking about one boxing legend answering a request, I figured I would talk about this other boxing legend and the question I was asked about him, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. So the question was, what race do you think he is? Now, uh, this has nothing to do with me, right? It's not about, I get the question, but just this is how I'm answering it, right? It's, I don't get to decide, right? It's, it's not what I think. Um, we all know what race he he is we all agreed on this <clears throat> some of us uh, confuse culture or ethnicity for race right and which is why you have idiots running around saying that canelo is not a white man right but julio cesar chavez for his part has what a lot of people will call pink skin right round eyes and light brown hair so we all know what race he is right moving right along Sugar Ray Robinson versus Randy Turpin in London, the first meeting. I've been meaning to talk about Sugar Ray, and since a few of you have asked me to, I figured let's do it finally. I'll probably make more videos about him all in due time, but let's just look at this first Turpin fight and discuss, right? So Sugar Ray Robinson um, was known for great footwork, I guess, but he didn't have great footwork. He had okay footwork. Uh, he was just very mobile, he, and he moved around a lot. But my problem with his feet, and this certainly was exploited in many different fights uh, and would not work at the highest level today, I think a guy like Margarito would have beaten him if he could take that power, and I think he could. Anyway, um, he would bring his feet close together a lot. His knees would almost lock a lot of the times. He didn't bend his knees very much. He brought his feet close together. His stance was too short in many instances a lot of the times, and... He had a very predictable rhythm, as well as he bounced in front of you up and down and in range a lot. See how he brings his feet close together, right? It's easy to knock him off balance, right? That's why I say someone like Margarito would have been hell for him, because Ray would have bounced out of range, brought his feet close together, and Margarito would have followed him up right and then what was Ray gonna do right get hit fall off balance right anyway Robinson in my opinion was a pure boxer meaning he didn't know how to deal with a dirty fighter right he didn't he wasn't dirty himself in style he was a boxer puncher he would counter punch a little bit but he was mostly a boxer puncher so you see randy turpin right off the bat timing robinson's bounce right and countering him right because counter punchers beat boxers right so he countered him and then he timed his bounce and he followed him up now randy turpin you know eh, I don't know what he's doing there, but he's trying, right? But he's literally running after him. And look at how up, straight up Robinson is, how his feet are close together, right? Someone like Pacquiao, imagine, remind yourself of Pacquiao, how Pacquiao knocked down Thurman, right? Someone like Pacquiao would be a nightmare for Sugar Ray Robinson, Margarito. Guys that applied educated pressure and just followed you up, basically, right? 
obviously you had to be a certain level. You couldn't just be a, a Brendan Rios or something like that, right? You had to be a certain level, I would say. But the top, top, I guess you call them pressure fighters. That's acceptable. Um, welterweight in the welterweight division <clears throat> today and, and, you know, the last more modern fighters uh, would have a very good chance of beating him. And I think most of them would, would beat him. You saw how he ran over there, crossed his feet, fell off balance. Now he was quick. He got out of there quickly, but Randy Turpin wasn't the fastest guy himself, right? Pacquiao could really follow you up. And Margarito, whose feet weren't super fast, was very consistent, right? He just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. He didn't he didn't let you breathe, right? I'm not sure what he's getting warned for there, Turpin. Yeah, you see. Ray's feet are way close together in many instances, right? He's got that predictable bounce. Turpin times it and goes to the body. And Turpin fought him very dirty, and the referee allowed a lot of holding and hitting, rabbit punching. And Robinson, who was a pure boxer, didn't know how to deal with that, right? He couldn't fight on the inside. I mean, he could throw punches on the inside, but his inside game was very amateurish, right? So Robinson jabs to the body and then takes his head off the line, right? Gets a little low, but his, he doesn't bend his knees too much, right? And then he just stands straight up and he does the right thing by jabbing upstairs. So that's using offense as defense, but there's not much on that jab, right? And it makes him vulnerable because he doesn't bend his knees much when he goes to the body. Um, only way he could really go is up with his with his upper body straightened out, right? Now, if he were to bend his knees a lot more and widen up his stance, then that would give him more upper body mobility, and he could also potentially move side to side better, right? But because his feet are close together and he's bent over, the only real way he can go, or it's just maybe more natural, is to just straighten out, right? And then spread his feet. So there's no real technical inside fighting from Sugar Ray because he was pretty one-dimensional, right? Which doesn't mean he sucked. He was just one-dimensional. You see Turpin timing Sugar Ray's rhythm, right? And then jumping in, fouling, roughing him up on the inside, and the referee allowing all this non-action, basically, right? So Robinson got countered a, a few times. Now he's looking for answers with that jab, right? He wants to make it less predictable. He looks unsure of himself with the jab, right? And Turpin is, you know, roughing them up, breaking them down a little bit. Not yet, but, you know, he's trying to, right? And he looks like the, see? Robinson uh, telegraphs that jab to the body. Now he, he tries to disguise it and he faints a little bit but what Turpin can read it right why is he able to read it because Robinson well you just read it in that instance I guess it's kind of predictable right counters him I'm not sure he lands but it looks like he landed a leaping left hook as Robinson was getting out of there right so that's the whole thing. I think you could have you could follow him up and and hit him, right? I think Turpin's probably able to read that lean by by Robinson. And Robinson was doing a lot of throwing a lot of lead jabs to the body and then trying to come up to the head, right?
see how he's trying to find answers because he's getting his jab counter right so he's trying to find a, a different answer and just his jab just looks insecure now right can't really set it up very well I like Robinson's um, pretty classical, classic guard, right? That lead hand is kind of low, but he fences with it and will jab, right? But he hides his chin behind his shoulder, and then he uses his right hand for defense to, to bring it to either side of his head to, to block and parry punches. Um, something that, um, for example, see, there he goes again. What's his face? Emmanuel Stewart was um, known for teaching his fighters, right? You see the bounce, right? And then he sets, so you know he's going to punch, right? Doesn't really, he just looks really insecure with his jab. Doesn't really set it up and Turpin again is able to read it, right? Timing that bounce right after Robinson brought his feet close together, right? Jumps in there and roughs him up. And you know, Robinson's fighting on the road. Who knows? Maybe there was a loud party next to his hotel room. You know, maybe they put something in his water. You, you know, you know, it's boxing, right? Boxing is a business. See? He just has a read on Robinson's bounce and that jab to the body, right? So he's taking that away. And he's timing Robinson bouncing around, jumping in with his punches, right? And when Sugar Ray is bouncing, he's straight up, right? His feet are too close together in many instances. And Turpin, for his part, bends his knees and he's spring-loaded, right? and plant it a lot more, ready to pounce. And then, you know, Turpin looks more thick. He looks thicker, right? More muscular. So he's taking advantage of, of his size. Robinson is taller, lankier, right? But Turpin is uh, just more stout. So this is the kind of fight that favors him, right? Turpin is also packing the padding of his gloves, right? Ah, who would do this most recently? Few fighters do it. But when he's out of range, he like squeezes his gloves together, right, and and looks to push the padding out of the way. There you go, see, so he could punch harder. He's changing levels a lot better than Robinson responding to Robinson. Robinson's trying to pounce, right? He reacts to it. See, Robinson would telegraph. See that jab to he telegraphs that jab to the body. Because he just leans before he throws it, right? In many instances. It's easy to see. So Turpin is able to, to counter it and take that jab. Not completely, but... And now you see Ray Robinson adjusting, right? So he throws two hard jabs and follows up with... Upstairs and follows up with the lead hook, right? So he's adjusting by putting more oomph... Changing the jab a little bit, more oomph and, and volume. Rabbit punching on the inside, referee, referee allows it, right? This is going to wear a guy down. Perhaps especially since he's fighting on the road, right? See how he telegraphs that jab? He didn't even commit to it. See, Turpin is right there to, to counter it, right? It's just so telegraphed. Turpin is timing that rhythm, that bounce, right? He could pick a spot where he'll be safe to jump in and, and maul Robinson, right? 
See how you just time that bounce? Boom, again, times the bounce. Yeah, this bouncing shit doesn't work, man. Not in today's boxing. And if you had a savvy enough fighter back then, it didn't work either, right? But just a lot of fighters didn't know didn't know what to do, I guess, right? Because technique has evolved. But yeah, this is just cheating, right? Dirty boxing. Um, Robinson's responding, and sometimes he's initiating the clinches, but he just he just wasn't very good at this type of stuff. So you could have there was one way to beat him, right? Once again, looks like he gets the bounce timed, right? He's got his rhythm timed. See, Robinson's planted, right? Okay, in this instance, it was that insecure. So he took away his jab to the body, and Robinson was very insecure with it, right? And he saw Robinson feigning with that jab to the body, telegraphing it, but not committing to it. So he just followed him up, right? That's what you have to do with Robinson. Follow him up. Once again, referee allows all this holding and hitting. And you can see that Robinson is, he's kind of doing it and responding, but Turpin really has oomph on his shots. And Robinson's just kind of, you know, whatever. He just doesn't know how to be a dirty fighter, right? Now Robinson is making a mistake because as Turpin gets low, he doesn't get low with him really. He's just punching down, right? Making himself vulnerable. <laughs> it's funny, right? After I said that, the commentator says, try punching down at an object. You'll find that you could generate little power, right? And you got commentators these days talking about how punching down gives you more power. It's come on, man. But that's it's a reflection of how the technique in in the states and in the West um, hasn't really advanced, and and there are very few teachers who who understand technique and teach proper technique. Right? It's just a reflection of. Well, what it is. Bad fundamentals. Um, yeah. A lot of this, right? Turpin was able to break up Robinson's rhythm by first countering him and, and reading his rhythm, countering him. Uh, making him insecure, and then um, mauling him on the inside, right? What happened there? Robinson's bouncing, right? Bouncing in place, and he gets timed. Yeah, this, this fight deteriorated very quickly into a dreadful, dreadful, dirty affair. Mostly due to Turpin, which isn't to say that Robinson wasn't holding because Turpin did shut him down a little bit, right? But that sort of fight was always going to, maybe not always, as we'll find out in a second, but it, in this instance, favored Turpin, right? Right, times that bounce again, right? And Robinson was coming off a whole bunch of exhibition fights, right? Where guys were just taking dives for him. I mean, there's there was one, I think it was in France. I forget who he was fighting. I think it was in France. He hits a guy, I think, with the, like a leaping left hook. And the guy, you know, does a Mario Barrios and just like jumps up in the air as if... a he just stepped on a mine or a grenade had exploded under his feet, you know? 
Oh, hilarious. Anyway, um, yeah, those were fixed exhibition fights. So maybe, you know, he hadn't trained or he just wasn't in tip, tip, tip top shape. Probably. I mean, I don't know. Right. But that's, that was the excuse. So this is the rematch in MSG, I think, New York. Uh, let's see how Sugar Ray Robinson adjusts, right? So he's advancing. He's already a lot more aggressive. He's not bouncing around as much, right? He's using a lot of lateral movement, right? And he's ready for the counter punch now, right? Because he got countered a few times when he was jabbing to the body. He's looking to see what Turpin, what kind of an answer he has for that now, right? And you see Robinson is a lot more intent on keeping that lead hand in front of his face. And, sorry, his rear hand and his lead hand is a little higher up now, maybe. Right? He's not bouncing. He's a lot more planted, right? Why? Well, because he's punching in this fight, right? So counter punchers beat boxers, right? As we saw in that first fight. And then once Turpin was able to get Robinson out of his construct by counter punching him, right? Then he would just fight him on the inside and maul him. And because Ray Robinson just didn't, he was pretty one dimensional, didn't know how to deal with that, right? Um, Turpin was able to just completely throw him off, take him out of his game and break him down and bully him and tire, wear him out physically, right? So Robinson comes out punching, right? Because punchers beat um, fighters, right? And a puncher will always have a puncher's chance no matter what style he's fighting. So right off the bat, you see Robinson plant his feet a lot more, right? Uh, get closer to him with little tippy-toe steps without bouncing and sit literally right that's what sitting means sitting down on the punch means sits down on the right hand to the body right and you see it's amateurish it's not really technically sound but you see robinson fighting on the break right or and punching in the clinch right and another thing you see is the referee just jumping in right not allowing that sort of stuff whereas in england turpin was allowed to foul on the inside right and now the referee is a lot more adamant he's much quicker to uh, stop the action inside right so now you see ray robinson punching right as turpin advances he commits to that left hook to the body i think it was and yeah it's sloppy and it's amateurish but he's fighting on the inside right uh and punching right he's committing to these punches he wants turpin to believe that inside is is not where he wants to be right he wants to discourage um turpin getting close to him and all that clinching and, and fighting on the inside he's taking advantage of it right so when people are saying, you know, Tyson Fury is going to maul, he's going to cheat, right? To beat Usyk, that's what Usyk has to do, right? He has to, when Tyson Fury reaches out to grab him, right? He has to go throw at least two hard punches to the body, right? Left, right. And then, you know, to try to prevent that. Right? The referee jumps in when... And I got no problem with the referee doing this, right? Because, uh, you know, Turpin is fouling, and we don't want to see this. That's why the first fight was dreadful. So I commend the referee for doing this. But you see the difference, right? The referee allowed Turpin to do that, and now he's protecting Ray, which, you know, is the right thing to do, right? Because the guy is fouling. See? See how... Robinson's planted now, right? He's not bouncing around. He's not doing any of that fancy shit. He's planted because he's looking to punch, right? Still jabs to the body. See? Turpin jumps in to be dirty. 
Robinson. It's sloppy, it's amateurish, but it's the best he can do, right? He commits to his... He punches on the inside, right? Turpin wants to make it a dirty affair, and the referee won't let him, right? You see Ray Robinson dip when Turpin wants to come inside, right? Kind of use his head a little bit, come up. Uh, he's using, you know, maybe like a football move or something or a wrestling move to stop Turpin from coming in on him like that, right? And most importantly, he has his feet planted, right? So he has a sound base and he can deal with this, right? And he can punch. And the referee is, you know, doing his job unlike the referee in in the first fight. See how much see how much more planted he is now, right? Showing you that he's adjusted. There's still a little bit of bouncing, he's still on his toes, but he sits it's mostly when Turpin is out of range and then he sets immediately, right? It's little little steps and he's gliding in, right? None of that bouncing nonsense. Right? See how he glided in there and committed, sit, sat down on the right hand to the body? That wasn't there in the first fight, right? Not initially. Very much planted, right? Not really jabbing because he got his jab taken away from him. A little bit here and there. See? Throwing big punches, committing, right? Showing Turpin that there, there's a price to pay. See? Big left hook, big right hand. When he's in range and in front of him, he doesn't bounce anymore. Right? See how he's taking little steps. Countering with power. Everything with power, right? To discourage this guy and break him down. When he grabs a hold of him, Robinson commits to as big a punch as he can to the body or, or a couple. Right? The right hand to the body with power. Changed up his tactics. And Turpin, for his part, he's standing up too straight. He's not bending his knees as much as he was in the first fight. He's not as spring-loaded, right? Um, he looks a lot sloppier. Maybe those body punches are already taking their toll, you know, I don't know. But he's standing up so much straighter, Turpin, right, in this fight. So it's making things easier for big right hand, right? So Robinson's adjusting and Turpin isn't as good in, in this fight as he was in the first. Just technically. It's not anything that Robinson's doing, right? He just... I didn't... It looks like it maybe caught him on the neck or something. But you see the commitment to, to punches, right? By Robinson. He came out punching in this fight. Not really using this jab too much because that got him hit. A little bit, yeah, but... A lot of lateral movement and none of that bouncing, very little, right? Big punches and a commitment to the body. And when he gets close to him, right, he wings big punches too. So Robinson was able to stop Turpin. There he counters him, moving back with a little left hook. It looked pretty big. It was short, but it was powerful. So, yeah. Ray Robinson could definitely adjust, and he understood the sweet science, right? He understood styles make fights, even though he couldn't fight all styles very well. Um, he did what needed to be done, even though his inside fighting looks amateurish or whatever. It's working for what it is, right? Much more planted, right? Looking to punch. And he understood that, you know, how do you be fighters? Fucking knock them out. Right? And now when Turpin advances, right, he counters him with power. See? Big 
the the um commentator points out how the commentary was so much better man the, the commentators back in the day understood boxing technique so much more than they do now he points out how Robinson glides away whereas he was jumping out of range and getting caught right now he glides away Now, this Robinson would be a lot more difficult to beat for someone like Margarito, right? Or Pacquiao. Maybe he would beat them, right? I mean, you know, it's Turpin, so whatever. Right, so the referee, you know, a lot changed in this fight. Uh, Ray was different, Turpin was different, and the referee was different, and the outcome was completely different. Right, so uh, Ray Robinson, even though he wasn't a complete fighter, he knew what needed to be done, and even though he would sometimes sacrifice um, or didn't have like perfect technique to execute certain styles, he still did it. And it still worked, right? If only a little bit, because he understood how to adapt and he understood the sweet science and styles make fights. And, you know, once he was in his, um, once he was on home turf and, you know, wasn't taken advantage of by, by the system, you know, he proved his worth, you know what I mean? And beat Turpin well within the rules of boxing, whereas Turpin, you know, had referees help and a lot of dirty fighting, uh, which allowed him to beat uh, probably a little bit unprepared Ray Robinson, who was fighting a bunch of, you know, fixed fights in Europe on this little, you know, tour circuit. So, yeah, man, I mean, Ray Robinson was no doubt a great fighter, right? Overrated. I mean, he was he was the lineal champion um, at 147, but did he really prove that he was the best of his era? He avoided some fights, you know. Um, maybe he could have proved he was the best, but, you know, he was a little protected, and he was a dumb man, you could say, in that division, but was he the best welterweight of the era? That's That's still debatable, you know, because he ducked some fights. Uh, and then he moved up to middleweight, and he was able to win the middleweight title. I don't remember how many times, but he was the lineal uh, middleweight champion. But he wasn't the best middleweight of of the era, right? And then at 175, well, he got beat up by Joey Maxim. So, you know, he was the lineal champion, and if I'm getting this correct, right, in in two divisions. Pacquiao was lineal champion in five, so how was he pound for pound a better fighter than Pacquiao? Like, it's just no comparison, right? Right. Did he win? Did he win a light heavyweight? He didn't win a light heavyweight title, did he? Anyway, it is what it is. A great fighter, you know, one of the greatest fighters of all time, no doubt, understood the sweet signs, knew how to adapt, knew how to fight a little one-dimensional, but, you know, you could say the same about Pacquiao. Pacquiao wasn't, like, great at, at all dimensions, you know, um, but yeah, just couldn't couldn't deal with. This was shown right when he had a slight size disadvantage, and he wasn't at a hundred hundred percent. You know what I mean? He couldn't deal with probably. I don't know that he was naturally bigger, Randy Turpin, but he was he was physically stronger, right? At least in that first fight. And then once he really gave up some significant size against someone like Maxim, just couldn't hang, you know, just wasn't, didn't have the skills to overcome the size disadvantage that he he was at in that fight. So, and, you know, so was he even as great as someone like Usyk? We saw how Usyk deals with, you know, how he dealt with the Randy Turpin, right? We saw how he dealt with that kind of guy on the road, right? Um, shit, every one of his fights is on the road. And, and he's given up 
similar percentage wise probably right similar size disadvantage to someone like joshua and you know we saw what he did with someone like joshua so i would argue that just looking at the record right both of them were lineal into different weight divisions but i think pound for pound with Usyk having given up um well, I don't know. I don't. I, I think it's too early to to talk about Usyk being greater pound for pound than Ray Robinson because yeah, it's too early. I apologize because that's only two weight divisions, and and Usyk might not even if he fights Fury. That's that's a huge. That's going to be a huge size disadvantage. So we'll see. I think it's still too early, but um, yeah, I he may Usyk may may be there insofar as pound for pound greatness goes. You know what I mean? Anyway. Um, yeah, no doubt a great fighter, but I mean, come on, man. Greatest of all time. Two weight lineal champion versus five weight lineal champion. What are we talking about? Like, what are we talking about here? You know what I mean? It should be a no brainer, but you know, fanboys going fanboy. We keep sitting real. Thanks for watching.